It's always better to bet the under. <laughs> I wonder why she got so far. Oh, she was a pretty young woman in New York who wanted to be an actress. A perfect setup for a disaster. <laughs> Can't think of any situation more precarious than that one. She's lucky she's only fat and not insane or dead. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Every guy she meets wants to get her in the sack. She's dying to work on stage, and nobody will give her a part. She gets older, less pretty, more bitter. First she's crazed because everybody wants to screw her. Then a lifetime of disappointments later, she's crazed because nobody wants to screw her. There's a new batch of ingenues on the block. New York chews up and spits out young women like Iris by the thousands. I wonder if there's an old age home that specializes in women who wanted to be actresses and never made it. <laughs> yeah. The Irish What's Her Name Foundation for the Has Beens Who Never Were. Yeah, like <laughs> You'll see her at Captain Tibor in Spain. I'll follow the sun by boat or by plane. It's any old millionaire in a storm, for she's got her mink to keep her heart warm. And sometimes she drinks too much with the crowd. And sometimes she laughs a little too loud. Her head may be aching, but it's unbowed. And sometimes she sees it all through a cloud. Ah, the apple tree and the hive of bees where we once got stung. Summers in Bordeaux, rowing the bateau, where the willows hung just a dream ago. When the world was young. <laughs> another time, another place. A, a thousand years ago. Girls don't take their bras off like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of girls don't wear bras anymore. I swear to God you're living in the dark ages. Don't you look, Mike. Don't you see anything? Bras are back. Any girl who knows anything about anything is wearing a bra. My bouncing knockers are definitely out. Will you stop it with the knockers? <laughs> Can't we have a civilized human being? Can't we be civilized human beings and have an intelligent conversation without bras and knockers? Of course, my dear boy. There's a new theory about why Othello killed himself and his wife. The talk is that he chose to stop breathing because he had allowed himself to be brought down to the level of ordinary men. That's not a new theory. It's more than 30 years old. I think it was Kenneth Tynan who voiced it when Olivier did the play in the old Vic in London. It was, it was the late 60s. Right. And that's exactly where you belong, in the late 60s. <laughs> <laughs> At least actors took pride in their craft back then. <laughs> Nobody even has a craft anymore. Every cop that retires from the police department becomes an actor these days. <laughs> It's become the thing to do, and none of them knows anything of what they're doing. You said at least again. So what? You've said it a few times. Have I? Yes, you have, I'm sure. They need a lot of cops in the movies these days. 90% of the footage shot has somebody in a blue uniform in it. <laughs> no, no, no. And from you, who knows better? You don't need cops in the movies. You need actors who can play cops. Your brains are fried. You're becoming a Hollywood airhead. What happened, what happened to a constructed life on stage that was full and real and poetic? Nobody even knows what that means anymore. These kids, they just, they just go out on stage in front of a camera and talk. There's nothing beneath it. There's no, no depth of feeling or understanding. Exactly. What happened to life? What happened to the craft of living? What happened to elegance, <laughs> dignity, passion, intelligence? <laughs> What's my motivation here? Ah, young man, you're jumping the gun. First you must feel the emotions of the character. You must have lived through his day. You must bring him to the moment in the play. 
Out of that, your motivation will flow. You will know what the character has to do, and you will accomplish that through the words of the playwright. <laughs> Darling, you're telling us what you want to do, but you're not showing us. Telling is telling, and acting is acting. We must see what you say through your acting, not through your telling. Telling is for snitches. <laughs> hey! Olay! Hey! Hey is for horses. Olay! Olay is for milk. <laughs> I'm not telling, I'm showing, I'm showing, I'm not telling. Nobody ever accused you of being a rat. Hey, I've always been a stand-up guy. I'll always be a stand-up guy. My people taught me to do the right thing, I always do the right thing. You know what I mean? You gotta do the right thing. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my uh, fiance, uh, Zorina. She's an exotic dancer. Give her anything she wants. I'll have a cutty sock, stones, twist, and a splash. Vito, get the table ready. After these drinks, we're going to eat. Oh, you should have been there last night. What we ate, mean what we ate. <laughs> oh, what did you eat? Oh, and what we ate. We was there all night. We must have been there five or six hours. What we ate. <laughs> Oh, what did you eat? And then we drank. <laughs> what we drank, Philly threw up all over the place. I couldn't walk. If you was there, you wouldn't have been able to walk either. Oh, what did you drink? You should have been with us last night. <laughs> I should have been with you? I didn't do nothing and you ate and drank? So uh, why didn't you call me? Call you? Who could call you? I mean, with the interference. So who could call you? You mean my wife? Leave her out of this. I'm telling you, leave her out of this. That's all. Leave her out of this? How could I leave her out of this? Who could call you with the interference? Leave her out of this. I'm warning you. I'm telling you, leave her out of this. All right. I'll leave her out of this. But you should have been with us last night. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> you always get me involved in these stupid stereotypes. You know, you've been doing this to me for 35 years, more, right. since we were little kids. <coughs> Why do I allow you to suck me into these moronic displays? You said sucking. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> <clears throat> Why do I allow you to influence me to exhibit myself in such a demeaning light? It beats the shit out of moaning and groaning. <sighs> Don't you ever take anything seriously? You know, I've been thinking, you know, you, you always did well with the women. I, I, I don't know why, but you've, you've had girlfriends coming out of your ears since I know you. Even in Hollywood, you were the master. In Schwab's, there was that bookmaker. What was his name? Uh, Firpo. Firpo, that was his name. One day, there was this beautiful starlet type at the cosmetic counter, and the guys wanted to bet about you getting her phone number. Firpo said, it's off the board. No bet. They all knew that you could get any girl's phone number. Yeah. So what's the what's the point? The point is that I don't think you ever took one of those women seriously. You played with them. You acted out all the passion and melodrama, but you never, never in your wildest dreams ever considered marrying one of them. Yeah. It it must be senility. The veins that go to your brain must be clogged with vintage sawdust. You were there. You witnessed what was going on. I was sleeping on couches all over New York and Los Angeles. I was living in my car. We were out on all night working as waiters and cab drivers to put together food money. Had nothing at all to do with pick, white picket fences, baby carriages, tricycles, or any of that American dream shit. How the hell was I supposed to think about getting married when I didn't even have a bed of my own? And who the hell are you to talk? I didn't see you running off to the altar. Yeah, but I wanted to. I never, just never met the right girl. I was looking for a way to settle down. You were looking for John Houston's phone number. You just maintained that fantasy of domestic bliss to keep from coming apart at the seams. You were always one step away from the loony bin in those days. When you got that big part on Bonanza, you agonized for weeks about compromising your art. If it wasn't for me telling you to take the money and run, you wouldn't even have done it. Bonanza. Damn. The 
That was more than 30 years ago. That was my first Hollywood number, my introduction to Avocadoville. I was so young and naive. I had no idea what was going on. After we did the show, I was out to dinner with this girl who was a friend of mine from New York. We were eating in a good restaurant. It was the first time I could afford one. After a while, I spotted the producer at the bar with four or five people. I invited him to join us, and he declined. But he invited us to the party afterwards at his place. Later, we went, and it was like, you know, one of those houses hanging off a cliff. Everybody was sitting around the pool that was lit like a movie set. A few people were swimming. We sat on some garden furniture, and the producer came over and asked us what we wanted to drink. I asked for some bourbon, and the girl with me said she wanted vodka and tonic. He went away. A few minutes later, he came back with this horrified expression on his face. I, I thought his mother had died or something. I asked him what was wrong, and he said that he didn't have any tonic. I laughed, and I told him that vodka and swimming pool water would be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> the girl I was with was an actress, you know, and she had been in California a while, and she knew the ropes. Later, I asked her what had, this had been all about. She smiled. She says, don't you understand? That's the way it is out here. It's like some small town in middle America. He's afraid you're going to say that the son of a bitch invited you to his house and didn't even have tonic for your date's drink. I couldn't believe it. You were kind of a dummy. <laughs> what do you expect? You take a lot of ordinary people and you pay them a lot of money to turn out oatmeal on TV for the great unwashed and you're going to get more oatmeal. Rich oatmeal, but oatmeal nevertheless. Well, I know that now, but I didn't know that then. It's all so boring and pointless, so utterly devoid of substance. <laughs> <laughs> if I had gone to work in the mailroom at IBM,